good to have you back. So we're going to continue from where we left off in the previous video and take a look at how we can use lit element to create views in Vaadin. So here we have a web component uh, demo view, which is built with lit element. We can see we have some styles here and a render method with the template. Now we can remove the styles for now. We're going to get back to those in a couple of videos, but for now let's simplify this to, to the bare essentials. Save, and again, that should reload for you. Now, what I'll do here is I'll create a field for name. So we can kind of see how this works. And then in the template here, I'll create an H1 and say hello and show you that you can use JavaScript uh, expressions in here. So dollar signed and curly brackets. And here, let's check if this dot name is set. If so, then we'll greet this dot name. And if not, then we'll greet world like that. All right. So now we can see we have hello world. If I put in my name here, we're greeting me. Now, one of the really cool things about Vaadin is, of course, that it comes with a big library of components that we can use. So let's go ahead and import a text field. So we'll import from Vaadin text field like so. And now we can just use that tag like any other tag here, and it'll show up. So we'll create a text field here, but in text field. Uh, then we'll give it a label. And you can see with the lit plugin that we have, we can see which attributes we're able to set. So we'll set label name. Then we'll bind a value to it. So the value is uh, what's being shown here. So we'll take the name here. Again, we'll use just JavaScript expressions here. So this.name. And then we'll add a listener for the input event. So the input event is on every keystroke, essentially. And for that, we're going to bind it to a method. So this.update name. Of course, this doesn't exist yet. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll create a new method update name. We'll get in the event, and the event has a target, which is of type HTML input element like that. And in here, what we want to do is update the name. So we'll set this dot name to be equal to the target's value. And again, that's the value of the input field here. Now that we save, you can see that the input field shows up here. It has the value here. And what we would kind of expect to happen right now is that when we change something here, we would expect the input uh, event to get triggered and the name to be updated. So essentially, this should be updated. The reason that's not happening is that we need to tell lit ele element which properties to listen for in the template. So we will need to add a decorator here. So at property, that should get automatically uh, imported, added to the import here. If not, uh, make sure that it does. So if we save that, go back here. Now you can see that that's getting updated as you would expect. All right, let's take a look at some more things that we could do here. So we'll add a private collection of people here. So we'll call this field people. And we'll initialize this to an array of objects where we have a name property, and let's create one person here. Rudolph, I guess Rudolph is a reindeer technically, but he'll he'll be people for this. And since this is private, we don't need to expose it as a property. Instead, we can do an internal property here. Essentially, it does the same, but it doesn't even try to reflect that to an attribute or or anything. So again, we'll mark that as a property, and then in our template here, let's add a header, people, and then create an unordered list where we uh, want to create a list item for each person there. So in order to loop over something like an array here, we can use the map operator. So we'll do this.people.map. And then for each person, we'll return an HTML snippet like this. And here 
we'll create a list item. Again, use the JavaScript syntax here to take the person's name. And you can see that we get autocomplete help all the way in our, in our template here. Again, save this. And we can see that we have the header here. We have Rudolph here. And what we want to do is add a button here now so that we can add the names from here to the list of people. Again, let's import a button here. So button's button. Button button like that. And then we can add it to our template. Button button. Give it a text, and then we need to add uh, listen for the click event, and create a, a uh, create a method to handle that. So we'll call this add name like this. Create the method, and what we want to do here is update the people array to include a new object with the right name. And for this to work, we actually can't mutate this array. So we can't just call push and add a new object to the same instance of the array because the change of the detection only looks at the instance here. So we're essentially working with immutable data structures. So there's a fortunately a really easy way to do this in JavaScript or TypeScript. And if you come from like a React background, this is something that's very familiar to you. So We'll take the people array and assign it to a new array. And we destructure all the people that are in the current array. And then we add a new person here. And again, you can see autocomplete working here. And the name that we want to add is the one that we have in our name field. So this dot name. And once we've added something, we can go ahead and clear that out. So this dot name equal to the empty string. And we can see that we have the button here. We can change something, click add, and that'll get added to the list here. All right, so that's the basics of working with lit element to build client side views in Vaadin. You can see that we have a reactive programming model where the template reacts to any changes that we make to the data model. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can connect that to our database and share data types between the server and the client. So be sure to ask your questions below, subscribe to the channel to get notified when that video comes out, and I'll see you in the next video.